You're watching Slow Bench. Welcome to Calabogie Peaks. I'm Paul Murphy, the resort's president, and I want to welcome you here today to talk about snowmaking and the art of snowmaking, which is key to any resort and any ski mountain. Snowmaking is what makes ski businesses work. Uh, we'd love to say that it snows every day and we get our snow naturally, but in fact, that's just not the case. More and more, ski mountains all over North America are relying on snowmaking and snowmaking technology to ensure that their customers are getting great conditions early in the year and throughout the year and late in the year. Now snowmaking at Calabogie is something that we've been focusing on for the last four years with the introduction of a brand new system which we'll talk about today. But let's just take a little context here so you can see why it's so important. The ski business is unusual in the sense that it's really only open 100 days a year. Imagine owning a business and running a business that's only open a third of the year or less. So when it's open, you have to be on your game and do your best and make sure that your customers know that you're open, ready for business and have lots of snow. And that takes us back to snowmaking because the only way to get that message through uh, accurately is through the use of high technology snowmaking systems that are in the market today to produce snow at a range of temperatures and weatherproof the business essentially from the vagaries of, of mother nature. Snowmaking is also important because during any winter we're likely to have one, two or three thaws, rains, rain freezes and so it's important to touch up a ski mountain and bring it back quickly when you've had that kind of situation. There's a big difference between artificial snow and natural snow. Natural snow is beautiful to ski through when it's fresh and untouched, it's powdery usually, um, but it doesn't actually make for a good base for ski terrain. It actually compresses and a foot of snow can become only an, an inch of terrain. The beauty of uh, man-made snow is it actually is the equivalent of what we call here in Calabogie white asphalt. We can lay it down in a way where it's very, very durable. The water, if it rains, will leak through it and we can farm it and reuse it for months through the season. So although natural snow is great and people are excited when they see it in their backyards, the key to successful skiing is to be able to put down a very large artificial snow base early in the winter. We think artificial snow actually lasts longer uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, it's produced in a way where water can actually leak through it if it's done properly and survive a rain better and faster or, or better I should say than the natural snow and then because it's denser and we pack it to the uh, floor of, of, of the ski trail it can actually withstand um, heavy bouts of sun warm weather longer than natural snow so it's hard to know exactly how much longer but uh, certainly a good example would be here at the end of the ski season well into May we have very large patches of artificial snow still on the ski mountain so it gives you a sense of how durable the snow really is and of course that durability is often a function of how deep the snow is and because our mountain is really craggly if, if you will and bony in some areas there are depths of artificial snow that are 10 feet plus and those are the ones that stay through till May. Four years ago our business made a strategic decision to take out the old system and put in a brand new system and there are two premier manufacturers of snowmaking systems in the world today one is in Europe and one is in the United States so we chose SMI from Michigan and we have an SMI technology here. And a good example is this fan gun right next to me here. Um, this is what we call a carriage fan gun, which means that we can pick it up with a groomer on these two clasps right here. The machine weighs about a ton, and we can take it anywhere on the mountain and then hook it up to our high pressure water system to make snow. In addition to these carriage guns, we have a number of pole mounted fan guns. And they look just like this, except that they're up on poles. What makes these machines unique is that these machines will produce 110 gallons um, of uh, water a minute. That's about three times the production of a traditional snowmaking system. 
So the speed at which we can make snow at Calabogie has increased dramatically. And what that means for the skier is that if we have cold weather, come Christmas, our trails will be almost fully open. So the way these fan guns work is they require two essential connections. They require a power connection and a water connection. This is an example of the power connection. This is a thick electrical cord that plugs into these power pedestals and we have about 130 of these on the mountain. So the entire mountain is covered with electricity distribution systems that allow us to hook in and power a fan gun no matter where we put it on the mountain. The second component that it requires is a lot of water. And this is an example of a water hookup. This is a, uh, essentially a fire hose, a two inch fire hose. It can withstand pressures of up to 2,000 PSI. We run the fan guns at around six, at 600 PSI at the base of the mountain, and our pressures are as high as 350 PSI at the top of the mountain. And a snowmaker will connect the fan gun with the fire hose and then open up this hydrant. It's a water hydrant, and we also have probably about eight miles of water pipeline on the mountain to service all of these fan guns. So think of the mountain as a big artery of electricity and water flowing through pipes that customers don't see. It's all buried by snow and by earth, but it provides a very vital element to successful snowmaking. I'm Brian Bunch. I'm the Mountain Operations Manager at Calabogie Peaks Resort. Okay, on our snow guns, we have a spray manifold, which the water comes out of, on the outside of the barrel. On the inside here is the nucleator, which is the air and water mixture. And this is all fed through a one inch hose connection in the back here. If you walk around, you can see. It hooks up on the back of the fan. And there's the electric fan inside, which pushes all the snow out of the barrel. The nucleator mixes air and water is a cedar or a nucleation, which sprays into the spray manifold and the water droplets from the bulk manifold will grab onto that frozen particle and get blown out with the fan to create snow. One of the features about fan guns that was very attractive to Calabogie is that they are environmentally very friendly and their energy footprint and energy consumption is quite low compared to traditional snowmaking systems. Here's an example. This fan gun has a 10 horsepower compressor at the base of the unit, which compresses the air and sends it up through the blades. And there's a five horsepower engine on the blades. It's a total of 15 horsepower. When you add up how many fan guns we have here in Viking sticks, um, collectively those motors use far less electricity than our old system, which used to pump compressed air and water up the mountain. So we've reduced our electric consumption for snowmaking probably in the order of 40%. And that is also great for the environment because by using less electricity, we're, we're leaning on the electric system much less and all the greenhouse gases and fossil emissions that come from power generation generally. So good for the economy, good for the environment, great for customers. It's a great triple play. Here we are at the heart of the snowmaking system. We're located at our new pump house here at the base mountain. Behind me are four pumps representing just under a thousand horsepower of water pumping capacity. We pump the water from Calabogie Lake, which is about 1,500 feet away, up into two ponds that are right behind this new building. And then when the water gets into those ponds, it gravity feeds into the pump house here, where it's caught by this thousand horsepower array of motors, pump motors, and driven up the pipelines, the two main pipelines up to the top of the mountain. The key to making successful snow in a very short period of time is horsepower. So we've increased our horsepower significantly to be able to move close to 2,000 gallons of water a minute up the mountain. And when you can do that, you can make a lot of snow in a very brief period of time, which allows us to kind of catch the good cold windows where you can make the most efficient snow. We can make snow at warmer temperatures, but it's always better to make it at colder temperatures because the volume of production is so much higher. Now there is one other environmentally great feature about snowmaking, which is you can think about it as us actually storing water on the mountain. So we have beautiful fresh water in Calabogie Lake. 
We use that to create snow for skiers in the winter. And then in the spring, all that water melts, comes down the rivers on the mountain, comes back into the ponds and finds its way back into the lake. So we're essentially taking water from the lake, putting it on the mountain, and then letting it return naturally four or five months later. So we can make snow across a broad range of temperatures. Um, we typically don't want to start making snow until we're about minus four or minus five Celsius. We could do it a little bit warmer than that, but it's difficult to do when the production's not that great. And then we can go and continue right through until um, the temperature starts to get into the minus 20s. And there's a point there at the minus 20s where it's just dangerous to continue to make snow because equipment breaks, things freeze very quickly. So for example, if uh, there's a power failure or a pump turns off, and that does happen the odd time, uh, we only have at those bitter cold temperatures 10 minutes at the max to get to all of the fan guns and all the pole mounted guns and unattach them from the water system uh, at both the gun and at the hydrant. And if we don't do that, uh, the water will freeze, the metal will break, and a lot of damage will fall. So we're careful when we operate at cold temperatures and we'll overstaff the operation so that we're ready to move quickly in case there's a, uh, a power outage. The best temperatures for making snow is probably um, somewhere halfway between minus five and minus 20 plus. Um, there's a point at which uh, it's just, the temperature is just perfect for making snow and we like it dry as well. So the, um, the bulb or the dampness of the air can be a major contributing factor to the production of snow. The ideal temperature is again being dry and cold. Now, if you translate that into how long it takes to make snow, there's a direct relationship. If we had just minus five weather uh, all the time, uh, it would take a long time to make snow and to fill these trails. It likely would take uh, a month and a half and it could be uh, over a thousand hours of pure production time. Contrast that with cold weather. If we have good dry cold weather, uh, the time to make snow can be about half of that. So being able to capture good weather windows is very helpful to the business and with this new equipment we're able to wait and to find those right times to go and get great productivity. We can almost do a trail a day if we focus on just the trail. Uh, sometimes we'll work on three or four trails at the same time and our goal is to get the trail open from top to bottom and then move on to the next trail. Uh, because some of the fan guns are in fixed positions they will run all the time and then the, uh, the portable fan guns will move to key locations uh, so that when they finish making snow in, in one trail, we hop them over to, to another trail. So there's an interesting mix of fixed guns and portable guns that we've developed to let us get across the trails as fast as possible. Often the season will be structured so that you'll make snow for two or three days, it'll be warm, we'll stop making snow for a while, then we'll come back on when the weather goes. So when the weather is in the right zone, it's a 24-7 operation. There's a day shift and a night shift, and uh, it never stops. And typically our longest run would be four to five to six days, and then you'll have usually a warm spot where you have to stop and wait for the cold weather to come back again. Well, that wraps up our snowmaking review today. I hope you've enjoyed walking around and seeing what actually goes on. As you can see, there's a lot of detail in the production and maintenance of snow. Thank you for joining us behind the scene and we'll see you on Slope Edge.